Well, welcome everybody to this exciting edition of Prophetic Life. Larry Sparks here, and I will also have momentarily my co-host, Tina Pugh, join me. Tina is part of Destiny Image. She works with me in the acquisitions department. She is also our publicist, connecting our authors and their messages with all of our wonderful media partners out there. But please, I encourage you guys, I, never, I don't think I ever say this, but it's so it's legal. Share, share this with some friends. Uh, please, I, I know right now in the earth, there's a lot of gloom and doom and bad news, okay? We, we understand it. Listen, we don't want to be people who like shove our head in the dirt and pretend nothing bad's happening. We know darkness is happening, but Isaiah 60 promises two things. There's darkness and deep darkness on the earth and its people, but there is glory. And I even, as I say that, I feel the anointing. Why? Because God has a plan. He has a strategy and there's something that Holy Spirit is doing in these last days. And I can tell you, folks, this is not just conversation. This is not just hype. This is not just charismatic brouhaha. I've seen it. I've seen it. And we'll, maybe we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but I will have my guests on. Now, let's see how we do this. Because, again, it's one of those things where one never quite knows. I have both Tina and Prophet Tracy Cook. Thank you guys for joining me. Hey, Larry. Honor's a blessing. Thank you, Larry. Well, I'm going to dive on in, folks, uh, as you're watching, as we go to the different people. I, to, to be totally candid, I am still learning this wonderful technology. So there we go. All of us have equal time here and equal space on the, on the video. But what I want us to do is uh, Tina, Tina and I are going to have this conversation with Prophet Tracy Cook. Here's what we are seeing because this message he carries, and we're just going to let him share. I mean, seven, he had this wonderful dream, powerful dream. Seven angels came with this powerful revelation. Uh, you know, if, if you get one angel, that's powerful, but seven, that's definitely something we got to pay attention to. Um, but I want him to share about that because it is going to fill you with hope. And then I think Tina and I, I mean, this is just a providential recording. We were in California just this past week. And what Tracy is sharing about and what he is seeing, we have also seen as well in terms of revival that is happening right now in the midst of darkness. Tracy, before we go to you, Tina, any greetings you'd like to extend to the fine people who are watching? Hello, everybody. Uh, we're super excited to be talking to Tracy. We, um, he's somebody that, that we met last year um, just digitally. We actually haven't met in person yet. We've been on the phone, but um, we're super excited that, that the Lord is using you to bring so much hope and encouragement and, and really just share with everybody what the Lord has been showing you. So welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Prophet Tracy Cook, it is a joy and a pleasure to have you on. I'm going to turn it over to you, and I want you to share from your heart what happened in this experience you had with these seven angels and what you believe Holy Spirit's telling you. Yes, sir. Again, it's my honor to be on with you guys, you and Tina. It's just a tremendous opportunity uh, just to serve God's people. Uh, I had a few days off of revival. Uh, I'm known as a revivalist, nonstop going. Uh, even one of my revivals that just came out like 300 some days nonstop in revival. And often when I get that break in between periods, so I took a couple of days off with some family. And uh, God just began, uh, one of the sisters uh, next door, one of the family members next door, just doing a lot of intercession prayer. I normally don't go into uh, a sleep at nine o'clock. That's kind of unusual. Because uh, that you know, been my time frame of praying and taking care of business and everything else has got to do with ministry. Uh, but nine o'clock, I felt so like something was taking place, so I laid down for about two and a half hours. Uh, the Lord began to show me in a dream, and in this dream, I saw seven angels gathering hands, and each one of those angels, Larry, had a specific message that. I was supposed to relate to the earth, about, you know, to speak prophetically to the earth, speaking to the church, speak to the world. So each one of those angels, as I was highlighting with Sid, as you know, interviews you, you'll have so much time to really explain the vision or revelation to you go to the next question. So each one of those angels from the first to the last angel gave me their uh, assignment and their message because um, I've been seeking God for a time, uh, January, the Lord told me everything that can be shaken will be shaken, and that came to pass, and then he, sh he shared with me how God's going to do with Israel, the prime minister would still be reelected, and he did, 
and then he showed me how nature was going to preach and prophesy and a certain world record was to be broken and that happened but then these this is the first time i've had dreams and vision of angels coming uh here and there you know sporadically in time but this was the first time that there were seven angels gathered hands together and each one of the angels they had like a a certain type of trumpet type of soul in their hands and each one of them had a, a message and these uh, each one of them specifically gave me assignment for every the time frame what was going to take place and we document this and record over um an hour of what the dream was and what the interpretation is and still even more on that now and the first angel um that's that's highlight some first of the, the first part of the angel I, i've got every one of these wrote down if, um, and just let me know when i need to uh Go to the next question or what have you. You go right ahead. Yep. Now, what I do want to say this to everybody who's watching, listen, I'm just one of the prophetic voices, and my job is just to serve God's people and hear from heaven for his people. Uh, yes, I, and I, I agree with the same thing. Yes, there are some things that are taking place, and there's a lot of shaking, but the shaking introduces the glory of God. And I believe that one of the reasons why the seven angel, the, that dream came to me was to bring hope to this land, bring encouragement, especially with everything that's taken place, the pandemic to the virus and all of that's been transcending, transparent with the church and the landscape of the church. Because there's so much out there that's been recorded that's gone viral. And uh, I'm not gonna knock anybody dream or vision because I'm not the only prophet out there. But we, we have to understand timing. God taught me timing. Timing is essential to the prophetic ministry because you can have an accurate dream and misinterpret the timing and put it out there and it brings panic and fear. So uh, it's a lot of that been taking place and our office been getting a lot of calls up. So the Lord, I believe that's one reason why this uh, angelical visitation had come. The first one is the angel that introduced Revelation to me, the message uh, of the United States, this president, what was going to take place. Um, January, even with Sid, we, um, we document this, but we did not air it because of certain privacy. There's certain things that uh, I didn't want to say out, uh, the plots and what's going to come against our president, which is going to be tomorrow in our two-hour uh, interview. I'm going to reveal everything that's going to take place, the place that's going to happen, how it's going to come, and what have you. But on here today to encourage people, the first angel that spoke to me was the assignment of our president, United States of America and Israel, because we're in a covenant relationship. And I want to encourage all of us that are listening. Yes, things are happening in the land and yes, darkness in the spirit, but that's a spirit of error too. that has come with this spirit of darkness because it had produced fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. We got to take a hold of faith and uh, break the spirit of fear that has come upon our land because uh, in this angelical visitation, when I was looking at all seven of these angels taking hands together in circle, they were unified, they were not divided. And that's how God wants the churches to be in the land, is unified, not divided. God's gonna bring, he's bringing the, the uh, foreshadowing what I call the greater glory move of God. Yes, in the midst of all of this, we're gonna see a move of God on president as never before. And everything that looked like the government or, or the certain mayor, government of the states are trying to close, trying to stop the people of God, especially in California. God is, he, and you just, you know, you're, you just came back from California, what have you. You, you know, because I, I get reports from pastors and what have you. They are determined to see a move of God because they're hungry. Here, even in South Dakota, where I'm at now, people are so hungry for a move of God that irrespective of what's taking place, God is ready to bring the glory of God. So I encourage everybody, the first angel is the angel of protection. And I'm not going to get into all, all the details of it, but we need to pray for this president because there is assignment against him. There is assignment assassination against him. I've already documented last year. I documented with Sid privately. Uh, and I don't mind telling this with everybody that's listening now. Yes, there, there's two major plots against this president. And there's two areas where it's coming from. So we as intercessors, prophetic voices, we need to pray over this president because he is the set man, uh, regardless of uh, what you believe, you love him or hate him, 
He's the one that God has chosen. So the first angel, told, he gave me an in-depth message about the president, about the United States, and it just confirms everything else from last year that God's been speaking to me uh, already to give message to this president. Because what we don't realize is that everything is shaping and course around the move of God with Israel and the United States of America. So that's the first angelical angel. It's the same the United States, the president, and Israel. So as long as we maintain this covenant, that's why God spoke to me. And I told Sid, and we, we documented this on Sid Roth as well, that the prime minister, and that was um, an impossible prophecy to come to pass. But it came to pass exactly like God said, for, for his glory, not man. Because God is doing something in Israel, and he's doing something in the United States because of covenant, the contract that we have. Well, you know what, Tracy, b before we move on, th I, I, there's <laughs> there's a lot to unpack there, but for the folks who are watching, what, I, I, I love how Tracy encourages us to respond to the prophetic words. Uh, sometimes people deliver prophetic words. Listen, I, 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 there's so much to unpack there. We can't do it all. There is a lot of fear out there masquerading as visions, dreams, prophecies. Listen. A lot of these people, they're not false prophets, but what you said, Tracy, there's a misinterpretation of the times, and truth be told, prophetic words are being shared. You and I have a responsibility, and we need to pray. We need to pray that certain outcomes actually don't happen, and we need to pray that certain outcomes that God wants to bring, upon, to, to, bring to pass, that they actually do happen. So I think you, you do such a great job, Tracy, in helping navigate people, because you know, I'm sure when you get prophetic words and intel and information, it's not all just happy stuff, but you always present it in a way where if we pray or if we act, we actually play a role in the outcome of history. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but. Absolutely. It, the, the, the recipe is found in Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people which are called by my name. So God's not talking to the people that are unsaved. He's talking to the remnant. He's talking to his covenant people. And what I want people to understand, because. Uh, I've been doing school with the prophets and the prophetic for about 28 years now that uh, no matter what you see, and it can be accurate in dreams and, and, and visions, and I don't take, uh, take away from none of it because there's 7,000 more that haven't bowed in their knees to the spirit of Baal. But it's essential to know time. Time is essential to the prophetic ministry, the prophetic words. And you can have a dream, uh, for instance, Prophets can have a dream or a prophetess. People can have dreams and all of a sudden uh, there's doom and gloom and, and it can be accurate. But then you need to seek the timing. God, when is the timing? Because we can produce fear worse than this virus by sharing dreams and vision that if we don't know the timing. The, the timing, Larry, is, is impeccable. And uh, the angel spoke to me and the, the last angel, uh, we'll skip down to the seventh angel because I know time don't permit. And sure. Yep, yep. Let's do it. So there's other questions, but uh, the seventh angel was the one that I spoke with on Sid that a um, uh, few minutes that we had there was, I saw the glory of God. I saw the glory revival like waves coming all over the land. And it was not just hitting one Pacific, Pacific people or church. It was going all across the land, the glory of God, the combat of God. And people, it was an influx, multitudes of people being saved. There was a great harvest of souls. And uh, the angel spoke to me that this would be a revival unprecedented like never before. It would be greater than the days of Azusa Street, the Ace of Long Island, Catherine Kuhlman, Oral Roberts, all of those together, Sharon Bob, all of those together. It would be a revival where man would not be the center, where man would not be the, uh, the, the focus of it, but it would be Christ. He will get the glory and the honor. But this seven angel said, this is the message that you are to tell the land because the people are in great place of fear and great place of despair. And they feel like uh, all hope to uh, what, what is their purpose now? Or, you know, all this taking place and transparent at the beginning of this, this decade looks like everything is just going chaotic. But we have to remember that uh what was the purpose of the virus being created? What was the purpose? All this is, is the a distraction of the election. So we, as a people of God, as a prophetic people, we have to get our attention back on the altars, get our knees back worn out at the altars and say, Lord, you know, there's only one recipe for healing our land and, and that's us turning from our wicked ways.
Well, and I love that you're sharing that, Tracy, because in the midst of all this, you're encouraging us. We need to focus on what God is doing. And there is, when I was listening to you talk to Sid, and I'm going to put this up here, there was this comment that was made, and I think it's so relevant because the reality is one of the things in this last great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it is not man-centric. It's not going to be about some celebrity superstar type of preacher. I love what you guys said. I'm putting it up. Sometimes man has been the biggest hindrance to what God wants to do in the earth, Absolutely. which I mean, that, that sounds really kind of what? But the reality is this, folks, God is raising up a remnant like Prophet Tracy was saying. He's raising up the 7,000 who have not ba bowed their knee to Baal. And like I said, uh, we just had the wonderful privilege of meeting people. You'd never know their names, but we met some wonderful folks in California who are out on the front lines seeing people saved healed, delivered. And when the church is shut down, you know what? They said, all right, we're going to go outside of the four walls and we're going to see God do something unprecedented, which is absolutely powerful. So uh, Tina, I, I would love for you to, to dive on in because I know you watched the same video and both of us were equally stirred about what God is doing. Yeah, I really appreciate I appreciate you, Tracy. Um, one of the things that I got while you were talking in Sid's video is that we we really just need to put our eyes back on the Lord and what He's doing. Like this swirl, this craziness, it's happening. It is happen going to happen. But when we look to the Lord, we can find our direction, what we need to be praying into, who we need to be connecting with. And I also love that you're very honoring that. I've never heard you talk bad about other ministers. And I think that's a key point um, in our in our community right now, because we are hearing a lot of prophetic words and sometimes they're different. And we need to be um, discerning about how to pray into those things. And um, and also what like what, what were you talking about, about California, where where those bad things are coming in. The Lord is doing miracles. The Lord is setting people free. He's delivering people from suicide. Um, and all, all kinds of deliverances and salvations are happening. So now is not the time to draw back. Mm -hmm. And um, what are you seeing about the glory coming and revival? And, and how can like regular people, maybe you're not a pastor, maybe you are a pastor, like how can we participate in that? What do you think we should be doing right now? For the move of God and for the revival, uh, how you prep because I've been a revivalist, uh, carrying revivalist so many years, especially in California. I just got through talking with a spiritual son out of California, and uh, God gave me the dream that California, and uh, I know there's been so much negative against California in the state of California, but in the dream that God gave me is where I saw waves coming over the ocean, it was coming upon the land. And I saw where people were being changed and turned, their hearts were turned, the hardest of games and uh, even the lifestyles that they were homosexuality and what have you. I saw a great conversion. I saw where children, teenagers come off the street. I saw the outburst of move of God. So one of the ingredients that I would give to them about the purpose of revival is, uh, of course, praying and fasting, but getting to a place where you understand repentance and it's, it's just not uh, repenting, but understanding that we've got to see that land like God. We've got to see California like God see California because there's people there that loves God. And there's people, unfortunately, that are, are in the environment of satanic or what have you. But if they ever see the love of Christ and they ever see the real anointing, they ever see the glory of God, they'll change. They'll be converted. And I think a lot of times we, we, we give up so easy and we want to just prophesy doom and not see where, all right, uh, just like he did with uh, Jonah. I still got people in Nineveh that from the top of the kings on down, they're praying in Cyclops, and there's repentance taking place in California. So God gave me a, a dream that California is going to see a major visitation, even though there's some things are going to happen in California, and there's going to be some shaking, of course. But the outcome of it, God's going to get glory out of California as well as the United States and the world. So, Tina, the first thing I would tell people is, how to prep for revival and a real move of God is understand that is he's going to get the glory. He's going to get the honor. We're just his servants. Uh, we need to let the Lord, and it's not predicated. Um, even uh, I tell everywhere I go, the anointing and the Holy Spirit, his gifts are not predicated upon the fivefold ministry gifts only. 
you, you could be somebody that just cleans a hotel and the anointing can come on you and you can spread revival. I mean, look at the woman in John chapter 4 uh, at the well of Jacob. I mean, there's just so many examples in the Bible where God used ordinary people to do extraordinary things. So I encourage people to know that. And the keys to revival is fast and prayer, repentance, and getting self out of the way uh, and realizing that whatever he does through you is for his glory and for him only. Oh, that's wonderful, Tracy. Let me ask you, as, as we kind of take the last few minutes and finish up, what other final thoughts would you share with the folks who are watching about what you experienced in this angelic encounter with the seven angels? I mean, there's so much to unpack there, but if you had one more point to share with us, um, what would that be? Well, the point I would share with the people uh, concerning this angelic visitation uh, I don't know why he gave me a vision, a dream of seven angels, uh, except for a specific message. That was my first time getting that dream and vision. So a uh, part of that interpretation, if I would say something in the close of this interview, it would be that God's going to do, uh, one of the angels gave me the message of hope in that, that we're going to see a greater level of miracles, signs and wonders, restoration. We're going to see reconciliation as we have never seen before. One of the angels, uh, that spoke to me in those seven angel visitations that dream was a ministry of uh, exhortation, hope, inspiration, and giving me a message of restoration for this land and for this time and for these people that regardless of what you see and taking place, don't give up hope because God is taking notice of your tears, your prayers, your heart, sacrifices, and what looked like you have lost it all, look like you're going under, you're not going under, you're going over. And God's going to carry you to the other side because that was one of the uh, angels' message to me is to give you hope beyond this hopelessness. That it's not over. We're not near to the rapture. We're not. Uh, this I know this. We are in the end times, but this is this is not the year of the rapture. Next year is not the year of the rapture. Yeah. A harvest. That's a revival, ladies and gentlemen. You know what, Tracy? Here's what I. I you know what? I sh I heard you share this on SIDS and I'd love you to just take a few minutes because it seemed like the Lord kind of gave you at least some clarity on a timeline in terms of between 2020, 2022. Could you briefly share that? Because I listened to that and it encouraged me, folks. It'll encourage you because I know we're hearing a report from the news, but what I believe the Lord has revealed to Tracy, that should encourage us to, for, for really for us to rally together and prepare for a great move of God that's coming. But what did that look like, Tracy? Well, uh, Larry, at the beginning of the year, God gave me the, uh, it broke it up in three categories uh, of the fours. The first four would be everything that could be shaken would be shaken. So that came to pass. And then after that fourth month, we would go into the, uh, the middle of the fourth month, which we are right now. Uh, it would be a time of um, restoration, uh, a type of uh, uh, restoration, reconciliation, and the last would be restitution. Last four months, we're going to start seeing a major shift in this land where it looks like everything is doom and gloom. And I know this might sound opposite of what other people are seeing. I, I can't help that. I, I just know what God showed me that the last four months, we're going to start going back to a place he can repair the breach. And then we'll go for the first seven months of 2021. We're going to go into a time of great intercession. And we're going to start seeing what we thought with delay this year, we're going to start seeing in 2021, and we're going to come to a time where it's going to be more angelical visitation, more revelation is going to be deposited, download to the body of Christ. So in the first seven months of 2021, you're going to start seeing uh, the suddenness of God. You're going to start seeing how people's lives are changed, families are coming in, people are being born again that uh, were look like you could never preach to to get converted. You're going to start seeing the smaller churches coming alive, you're going to start seeing outbursts of events that are going beyond the four walls of the church. You're going to start seeing a lot of shaking in leadership, but it's going to be to a place where God's going to bring people out of hiding. He's going to bring up the Samuel generation in the first seven months of 2021. Coming into 2022, there is a period in 2020, latter part of 2021, 2022, that we got to pray for our president like never before. So I would throw that out early. Uh, I will give you that to you in that time frame because I know that's accurate by the Lord because I've already seen two, two things come to pass in that time frame. So again, this latter part of 221 and coming to 2022 is a major assignment for the, um, the land, the government, and the kings that God set up. 
but to encourage every one of you in that time frame, you're going to start seeing everything about your life where you thought you lost in the midst of this virus and business, things that had closed, the disappointment that people brought fear and everything else. You're going to start seeing changes take place in that time frame. And that, that's just a little bit highlighting of that, Larry. Well, and I'm so appreciative of you sharing that, Tracy. I'm looking through all the comments, and people are very encouraged. Again, does it mean that we don't pay attention to what's going on around us? It just means that we press in for a kind of a higher reality. The higher reality is what God wants to release. And uh, what I love, there's a song by Bethel Worship called God of Revival. And it says, in the darkest night, God, you can light it up. And right now, every revival, I mean, you're a revivalist, Tracy. And what I love about you is you honor the past moves of God and for anybody that knows anything about history, it's a whole other side conversation because one of the things we actually see a demonic arrow aimed at right now, and I'm getting this because I'm on, I'm on this video with a prophet, so all of a sudden I'm getting prophetic clarity. We see a demonic arrow that's aimed at history right now. I mean, even history being taught in the United States and other nations, there's this either neglect of history, wanting to tear down history or rewrite history, but we know about revival history in the midst of some of the darkest, most horrible times, God would break in with power. And, and that is what we are praying for. That's what we're believing for. I encourage you guys, continue to pray. Continue to be an activist. Continue to show up where God tells you to show up because that's how the glory comes. We pray for glory, but we also carry glory to wherever God calls us to go. Um, Tina, any any final thoughts? And then, then uh, Prophet Tracy, I'm going to ask you to pray if that's okay. But Tina, any final thoughts there? Absolutely. Yeah, just let's go into prayer. That's a good one. So Tracy, I'm going to just give it to you just a couple minutes, but you can pray, you can prophesy, uh, whatever you're led to uh, pray and release by Holy Spirit. Put it on you, sir. We love you. We thank you. You're a voice of hope right now. Love you guys much. Everyone just listen, just stand your hands this way and sustain your hands to the camera. Father, we thank you for this honor and privilege. We ask God that you will move into every heart, every home. We thank you, God, that you send in angels to every home, every man, woman, boy, and girl, child, under the sound of my voice. And Lord, give them a breakthrough anointing, moving their ministry, moving their business and their lives and their family. Uh, Lord, I break the spirit of discouragement, the spirit of fear. I release faith in atmosphere for created miracles. I command sickness, diseases, tumor, cancer, AIDS. I command the spirit of fear that is over our land to be broken. I come in agreement with Tina and Larry today that God, you're reaching your hands out, touching your people. You send the angels on assignment. We break the back of fear and we command the United States of America, our president, Israel, all third world countries. We prophesy this move of God in spite of what we see and hear. Out of darkness, ashes, you're going to breathe upon people's ashes, going to give them double for their trouble. I thank you for this honor and privilege to speak prophetically to everyone that hear my voice. Lord, I encourage them today, knowing they don't have no trouble, so they need is faith in God. That's a miracle of their name, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing. And uh, let's just take a moment. For, I, I believe, Tracy, as you were prophesying and praying, people are just being touched right now. So we just take a moment. We never run too quickly. Lord, fill our friends with hope, God. May they see what you're doing. And I encourage you, even in the midst of news, don't feed on the news. Don't feed on what you scroll through on the phone. But let's feed on the scrolls of God. God releases scrolls through his prophets. And again, it's not that these prophet people are telling us something contrary to the word of God. What prophet Tracy is going around preaching with great hope and expectation is Isaiah 60. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. That is our message. Uh, one last thing, uh, prophet Tracy, before you, before you pop off and we, we say goodbye. I do want to encourage you folks. It is a joy for us to be working with him. He's got an amazing book coming out in September. I believe, Prophet Tracy, this is your first book. Yes. Um, unwrapping. Well, and what, Here, I'm going to pop up a video. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a low budget type of thing, but I do have the cover. So I know it kind of covers us all up. But again, I told you this is a little bit of a low budget thing. Uh, Heavenly Secrets to Unwrapping Your Spiritual Gifts. This is available now on Amazon. I know ultimately it'll be available on Prophet Tracy Cook's website, but you can pre-order it now. And what I love about this is that you're not a theorist. 
You're, you're not just teaching people theory about operating in the gifts of the spirit. You are a practitioner. And folks, this is what I want to encourage you on, okay? Because I, I love books for, about the gifts of the spirit from those who operate or occupy the role of a prophet. So, uh, for, so Tracy Cook operates in the office of a prophet. Here's good news. You know what a prophet does in the body of Christ? Their job is not to hear God for you so you don't have to. Their job, and this, Tr Tracy, you go around releasing impartation and prayer and now a resource like this. Their job is to actually help you, help you hear the prophetic voice of God for yourself in a greater way. And I believe this is going to be a powerful book that helps lots of people. Yes, sir. So thank you, sir, for that. Thank you so much, all of you guys, for joining us today. Again, the book will come out in September, Unwrapping uh, Heavenly Secrets to Unwrapping Your Spiritual Gifts. And please look up Prophet Tracy Cook. I have his website right here. It is cookrevivals.org, and that's where you can find out where he's ministering, his itinerary, all those wonderful things. Um, Tracy Cook, any final thoughts, words? No, love you guys. Appreciate you. It's an honor to be with y'all today, and God bless you. Thank you guys for joining us today. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.